Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today, I'm gonna to do something that I don't usually do and that's gonna be creating an absolute beginner tutorial for Adobe Photoshop CC. So uh, as most of you know who have watched this and follow the channel, I'm doing a video every day of the year of 2014. I think I've done like 140 or something so far. And I've had people come up in, well not come up physically, but email me and say, you know, I would really like to be able to follow your tutorials, but I'm an absolute beginner. So that's what I'm gonna to try to remedy in this video. I'm just going to go over a lot of the most common features that I use in Adobe Photoshop throughout all my tutorials and give you a basic understanding of them, all right? So most of you who follow this channel, you're not gonna get much out of it. You can probably just click out of here. Uh, but for those who are absolute beginners, this will be a perfect video for you, all right? So check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet and subscribe here on YouTube. All right, so when you load up Photoshop, this is what you're presented with. There's no document currently open, so you can't design anything. All right, so the first thing you have to do is go to File New. So we're going to name it Intro, and uh, right here you have Presets. I uh, Usually I just use Custom, and the Width by Height, these are by default in Pixels, although you could change it to Inches and all these other units of measurement. Uh, the Width, I'm just going to use 500 by 500. And, you know, depending on what it is you're designing, the width and the height are kind of important uh, because if you're going to use Photoshop, say, for example, for having something that's being printed, like a business card, well, it's important to set the document up right from the beginning. So, generally speaking, when it comes to uh, designing something that's going to be displayed on the web, you use a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. Now, if you want something that's going to be printed like on a business card uh, generally you would change this to inches and you could specify 3.5 by 2 inches although you also want bleeds and all that and you know whoever you're using to print your uh, business cards through say for example they would offer usually most of them will offer, offer like a PSD or Photoshop file or at least tell you what the dimensions used to be usually it'd be a little bit larger this than this for the bleeds but anyhow uh, just for this tutorial we're gonna assume we're working with something that's gonna be web-based so I'm gonna use 500 by 500 pixels and it's web-based so 72 pixels per inch color mode RGB this is also for print so usually or not for print, but for web. Uh, so usually, if the resolution you have set at 72, the color mode, you're going to be in RGB. Sorry, I got interrupted. Uh, but yeah, RGB is for the web, and then CMYK is generally what you would use for print. All right, so kind of important. Um, and then background contents, that's whatever. It's, when you hit OK, do you want the background to be transparent or white? Usually, I leave mine at transparent. All right, then hit OK. So this is the document, and you know it's transparent because these little white and gray checkers right here. That means there's nothing that's filled in into the default layer one. So real quick, <clears throat> I'm going to go over just a couple things. So to fill this in with a color, we would use what's called the paint bucket tool. All right. So you see these two blocks right here, these squares. We have a foreground, and then we have a background. Whichever, and you can see we can toggle between both of them. Uh, whichever is currently on top, that's the one that the paint bucket will fill in. All right, so let me just fill it in with a white color. If we click on it, we can specify the color here, and that's 100% white. It gives you a color code over here, which happens to be the hex code for white, six Fs. And you can see it changes as we change over here. So we're gonna make it white, I'm gonna hit okay. Very simple. We can also see a little preview of this layer over here so what are layers okay well they're exactly as they sound you can have uh, as many layers basically as you want and each layer by default when you create it if you come over here hit new layer or hit control shift and N or command shift and N on a Mac you'll see that uh, we have the new layer dialog and you can give it a name. It's usually good practice to give it a name just because if you have a ton of layers, it's easy to look and see what it's called. Uh, I don't have any purpose for this layer, so I'm just gonna leave it layer two. And 
We'll go over clipping masks later though, but then you just hit OK. So as we can see, we have two layers now, and this one is currently empty, as we can see from the checkers. I mean, just trying, there's nothing in it. All right, so let's say, for example, we wanted to add some type of shape onto layer two. Well, very simple. We come down here and we have these different type of tools. So we have a rectangle tool, rounded rectangle tool, ellipse, and a polygon tool, line, and custom shape tool. So if we wanted to add a, uh, like a rectangle, we could do that. But as we could see, it's white, so we can't really see it too well. So let's change the color. We'll make it just a blue. And if I left click and drag, we'll see how it kind of behaves. Uh, if you hold shift, it stays a perfect square. All right. Now I'm still holding, I haven't let go of the left mouse button. If you hold alt, wherever you initially clicked, that's where it's going to originate from. And then if you hold sh shift and control, it'll keep it a perfect square. But yeah, that's just some different ways that you can, you know, manipulate and use these tools. And this isn't just for the rectangle tools, the other ones as well. All right, so now we can see we have two different layers. Very, very simple stuff, obviously. All right, so to rename a layer, double click on it. Just type it in, you know, type whatever you want. That's how it works. And when it comes to layers, there's a lot of different things you can do. So if we double click on the right side of the layer, we will see the layer style dialog box come up. And this is just for this layer currently we can see it's selected and we have all these different layer styles so if we go ahead and click on say for example bevel and emboss we could see it automatically created this interesting bevel effect all right so you could play around with all of these settings over here and you could change the style to an outer bevel You could come down here, you could change the lighting direction. And so you just have a ton of options in terms of how you can customize this bevel effect. Now you can also add a, a bunch of these layer styles simultaneously just by checking them. So stroke, just as a stroke, you can place it inside, change the color. You can even make it a gradient stroke, as you can see here. And you can specify the colors by clicking on gradient and you have presets up here and you can also move these around and create your own very s interesting simple stuff hit ok alright obviously this looks very ugly but I'm just trying to show the different things you can do I'm gonna deselect those an inner shadow will allow you to apply an inner shadow you can specify the distance the size and the choke and the angle as well and the contour will change the appearance of this as well and give you a lot of different options so basically the name of the game here is just to experiment based on what you need same thing with all these other ones inner glow it sounds exactly you know as it's as it is opacity turn this up to normal uh, make it really come out there or you make it white even so you could do just so many things with these layer styles, gradient overlay, change the angle, and then once again, you can edit the gradient, use a preset by default, double click on these color stoppers, and you can do a lot of interesting, cool things. But yeah, very simple, but also very powerful if you know how to use these things correctly uh, as you wish. So. My computer's being slow. There we go. Drop shadow. One thing I have to stress, though, don't overuse these. A lot of new designers, you know, that, that I've attempt, they're they're so eager to use these, they, they use to the overuse them way too much, and that's bad for general design. But anyhow, those are layer styles. Let me apply one though, real quickly. Um, just add like a gradient overlay. Hit OK. We'll see beneath it we have the effect, so you can toggle this. Uh, up or down gradient overlay so you can hide individual so if you had like multiple uh, great uh, effects you could hide and show them very simple stuff 
Uh, so I'm going to just hide that real quick. All right, so right now this is called a shape layer because we used this over here, the, this one of these tools. So we used rectangle, but it applies for any of these other ones. It's called a shape layer. And what's interesting or unique about it is you can scale this layer up to any size without having any type of pixelation occur. So let me just show you what I'm talking about because this is very important to understand. So I hit control T by the way to get that up. So that's just another tip there uh, to be able to size uh, things and scale them. You hit control T with that layer selected. All right, so let's start off with a square right around that size. Select the move tool and hit apply. All right, so I'm gonna take over here the rectangular marquee tool. So you're probably wondering what is the difference between these things over here and these over here. Well, this right here, this rec rectangular marquee tool, it allows you to select areas of layers and you could do it with a, a rectangle or ellipse. And so if I hold shift, left click and drag, just a, a size that's roughly the same as this, and then I, create a new layer, hit OK, and then fill it in with my paint bucket tool. We'll see we have two layers that look, and hit Control D to deselect. We have two layers that look pretty much identical, but they are different types of layers. This one right here, we can see this little icon, uh, this square with these little points on each corner. That's to denote that it is a shape layer, but this one doesn't have that. So, actually, a a better uh, shape I probably could have used was uh, an ellipse. But if I hit Control T, you're not going to be able to tell too much with the pixelation because these are straight lines. So let me real quickly hit Control A, delete, and then get out an ellipse here because we'll be able to tell much, much more with a circle. All right, so now. If I were to hit Control T and scale this up real large, select Move Tool and hit Apply, we'll see that the corn it just looks all blurred out and just bad. Okay, so if we created a an ellipse with a shape layer, the Shape Tool, let me hide this one, and I hit Control T. We could, si we could scale this thing up to any size imaginable, and it remains perfect. All right, so that's real important to understand the difference between a rastered layer, which is this right here, and then a shape layer, which is this. All right? Okay, so let's move on into some other things. I uh, Let's talk about filters a little bit. Hit Apply. Now, most of the time, when you try to add a filter to a shape layer, it's not going to rec uh, work correctly. So if I go to Filter, Blur, and go to Blur, it'll tell you this shape layer must be rastered be rasterized before proceeding. Do you want to rasterize the stick? So what this means is it will take this and it's going to convert it to one to the other type of layer I was talking about that we showed when we're, in which we scaled up and became pixelated. So you hit OK. And now you go back to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur, and now you can apply an effect. And so all these effects, there's a lot of them, I, there's all different types of categories. You have a lot of different types of blurs, lens blurs, motion blurs. If you add that, we can specify the distance and the angle. Very simple. And really, it's just all about uh, experimenting with these. Uh, but please do not add a lens flare. <laughs> oh man, I remember doing that in late '90s. So yeah, don't add lens flares. But anyhow, uh, so that yeah, you have filters, but you can only usually apply those to rasterized layers. Uh, let's talk about some more of these tools. Uh, the magic wand tool allows you to select either inside or outside of wh whichever part of the um, layer has design in it uh, and for instance if we wanted to select this and delete it you could do that very easily I uh, go back a few times uh, this over here the lasso tool will allow you to select a certain portion of it and you can hit delete 
or you could fill it in with another color and it will only fill in the part that you have selected on this layer otherwise if you want to back up I'm just hitting control Z for that control shift N for a new layer and then you fill that in and it fills in all the way so it's kind of important to understand these very small differences in terms of how you work with layers alright so if you ever wanted to merge a couple layers together very simple you select both of them hold shift hit control E or right click and merge layers like that I'm gonna back up alright and let me think about some other things we can talk about. There's a lot more. The eraser tool. So over here we have all these different options. Uh, you have different brushes that you can have. Then I have a lot of custom brushes as well. But these ones are soft uh, brushes with the hardness set to zero. So the size right now is 261 pixels. So if I were to select this and you just left click around, you'll see how that works the harder it is the more it's gonna look like that very simple alright and we have the type tool this is where if, if you ever need text this is where you type <laughs> in my pink font and you select back on it change it to black you have all your different fonts that you ever had installed so you can visit a site like dafont.com and find a ton of different fonts to use uh, over here you have your aliasing option so if we select none let me make this bigger hit control T hold shift bring it up select move tool hit apply you can see how it looks pixelated when you have anti-aliasing AA set to none if you want it sharp this is generally what you would use if you were trying to emulate what it looks like on a web page and then smooth just makes it really smooth I uh, and then you have your font options like you know bold, bold italic, blah blah blah. And then you have your size over here, which you can always adjust by just taking the move tool with the layer selected, Control T, and scaling it that way. You can also rotate things very simply if you just direct, if you take your mouse outside a little bit further and it'll turn this way. You can hold Shift to make it stay on a very specific type of degree so if you want a 45 there you're at you can see that little 45 marker just like that all right don't apply all right so of course when it comes to type layers you can apply effects to those as well so drop shadow please don't do this though in most cases I see a lot of new designers that had to drop it because it just looks so cool. But the thing is, when it comes to design and especially web design, uh, the whole drop shadow thing has, has been used to death way back in the late 90s even. So that's something you will kind of want to stay away from. It. But you, it still does have its place, drop shadow, uh, if it's used correctly. But you really you want to try to stay away from it as much as possible like let me show you a suitable use for the drop shadow effect real quick I'm gonna create a new layer let's make this like a darker desaturated sort of blue alright and let's say I come over here let's make the color of this text kinda of colored right around there alright if I double click the right side of the layer and I hit drop shadow we can see, we can't really see it, looks like crap, etc. I'm going to change the blending mode to normal. At the very top, you can see it was cut off on the screen. Opacity to 100%, the angle to 90, up and down, and the size to 0, and the distance to 1, and then change the color. If I get this color right here, and then almost like a white, but a very light blue. And then maybe hit uh, inner shadow, make that normal, 100% opacity, and change the uh, size to zero, distance to one. And this time we'll get that blue color again, make it a little bit darker. Control T really make this big so we can kinda of see what's going on see that's that's an instance where you can use the drop shadow in one of the instances and it looks pretty good and not cheesy alright uh, 
So yeah, what else can I cover here? I mean, there's so much, uh, but in terms of web design at least, when it comes to these other tools, I pretty much showed you most of the tools that you would use. Oh, except the pen tool. So the pen tool is something almost every new designer fears. I'm gonna move this to the top. So the pen tool, you have two different modes. You have path and shape. So if you want to have a shape that's created from a pen, I uh, you would leave it on shape. Path is a little bit different. I uh, so if I just start, I'll make a a white color. Left click, and we can see we can create interesting shapes like this. Very simple. All right. So I'm gonna back up. We can also left click and drag to create shapes, more smooth shapes. And we can also edit them afterwards. So by default, these do create shape layers, except you're just not using one of the presets here. So if you take this over here and take the direct selection tool, you can take and click individually each one of these and make adjustments. You can also take these and it can also affect how it appears. Very simple stuff. And of course, anything you create, you have all these layer style options. Another thing I wanted to talk about is layer blend modes, okay? So each layer, if you select it, by default, it's set in normal. But if you take this drop down and you look at it, we save all of these other options. And this affects how it interacts with the other layers beneath it. So let's say, for example, let me delete this ugly shape here. And let's get our high guys thing over here. So cheesy. I uh, and we'll get a circle. And let's also make it uh, like a light blue. Hit OK. All right. So by normal, we could just see we can't see anything behind it. Now, if we take this, we hit dissolve. Nothing really happens. Darken. It slightly changes this. What we can do now, just to experiment real quick, is use your down arrow on your keyboard. And you can see all these different ways that this layer begins to interact with the layers behind it. So very interesting things that can be done just through that. All right, so yeah, I, I'm trying to go through all these. Yeah, we also have the gradient tool. You can't apply a gradient to a shape layer. It has to be rasterized. So if we want to rasterize, uh, I'm going to delete this one. So if you want, you also can't apply it to a type layer unless you use the layer effects and specify gradient over here. All right. But type layers as well as shape layers can also can be uh, rasterized. So if you go to, you right click it and you hit rasterize type. Now it is rasterized, although the effects are still here. And you can toggle this on and off, or you can right click it and rasterize layer style, and that will bake basically the uh, effects or the layer styles that are in it into the actual raster. So I uh, now I could, for example, do that, although it stays entirely on this actual layer. So now this layer consists of this gradient. So you can't really edit it too much. You don't really want to use it like that. Uh, like say, for example, you wanted to create a gradient that only stays or is only visible within this type right here. So what you would do is create a new layer, control shift N, use previous layer to create a clipping mask. All right, hit OK. And now you can see it's pointing down to the layer beneath it. So now we could see it only stays inside of the type. And we can also do cool things like play around with the layer styles. So I'm using my down arrow key and we can see it does all sorts of cool, interesting things. And you can have multiple layer uh, clipping mask layers. So if you control shift N again, check this off, hit OK. And it doesn't even have to be a gradient. You can put any type of design in here as you would any other layer. So uh, ellipse. See, very cool and simple stuff. Uh, so we talked about uh, filters a little bit. Now, when you do filters and you add them through this menu, it becomes a permanent fixture or part of that raster layer. Uh, you can do what's called an adjustment layer, though. 
So let me show you what that is. Let's go ahead real quick. We're going to take all these three layers, hold shift and select it and hit control E that will merge them. So now that's all one rastered layer. So if we want to change the hue of this, for example, we could do that right here or go to windows. If you don't see that and go to adjustments. And that brings this up. We can change the brightness and contrast levels. So let's just try brightness and contrast. When we change that and we try changing the brightness and contrast, we'll see this. It selects every single layer up that's right here. But if you only want it to select the layer beneath it, you just select this button right here. So now we can change the brightness and contrast of just that layer. Okay. And you can add multiple ones of these. So hue and saturation, select down. Now we could change the color and the hue very easily. And so what's cool about this is you can adjust these layer on. So layer, did I say layer? Later on. So if you double click them, it'll bring up the properties and they're dynamic. So that's really cool. So they're non-destructive as it's called. All right. So yeah, that's just a ton of stuff I went through. A crash course. Uh, I think there's a couple other things. Yeah. When it comes to the gradient tool up here, you have presets. And the first one is always uh, your current foreground and background color. Uh, you also have foreground to transparent. So if you click on this and I uh, we use it, it goes from this color to transparent. And let me think if there's anything else that's major that I'm missing. I mean, this is such an elaborate program that I, it would probably be kind of easy for me to miss something. Uh, we also have a whole other world of 3D. I'm just putting some text there. And the reason we don't see it is because it's a layer uh, clipping mask. So we just drag it up to the top, right click, and where's it at? Or actually you just, you drag it down real quick. That kind of solves that issue. You can drag it back up. It's no longer a clipping mask. Uh, take this 3D and you could do a uh, new 3D extrusion from selected layer. So this is a type layer we're adding this to, and it may take a little bit of time, uh, but we can see now it has made it 3D. Now there are full tutorials, all plenty of them, uh, that are available that cover just the 3D aspect of Photoshop. Uh, there's a lot that you can really get into if you experiment with these things. Uh, when it comes to 3D, so you have your own 3D tab, you have all this stuff. It's like what the hell is going on? But really, it just uh, takes practice and experiment with uh, experimenting with a lot of these. Uh, you have just so many options. I don't even really want to cover it at this point just because I'm trying to keep this simple. But yes, you can do 3D in Photoshop. Uh, I think I do have a few, a couple tutorials on my channel at designcourse.com. Uh, but yeah, you can check that out. But I'm not going to really go over 3D too much. Uh, but yeah, I think I've covered just about as much as I want to. You know, you have the image uh, section up here. You can do things like adjust the canvas size, which is the size of this that we made 500 by 500. So if you wanted to make it smaller or bigger, you could do that. Or if you wanted to take every image or all the layers in here and scale them proportionally, you would do image image size and change that. So if you do, if you wanted to go to like 900, that happens. You can see it's a little bit pixelated because these are rastered layers. So it's something to always keep in mind. You don't want pixelated layers. Uh, let's see, what else? Is there anything else that is pretty major that I'm forgetting? I don't think uh, there is really. I mean, most of the tools that I've showed you as I'm looking through, you, know, you have interesting ones like clone stamp. If you select this, and you can also ch change the size over here, uh, and select, say for example, this, hit Alt and left click, we can clone things. Very interesting. I'm uh, trying to think of anything else. Yeah, I think that is probably, we're at 30 minutes already. So that is just a very quick crash course in how to use you know the basic functionality of Photoshop CC. All right, so 
yeah, I'm doing a ton of tutorials. I've done one for every day of the year of 2014 so far. I think it's like 139 or something at this point. But yeah, uh, subscribe to the, the YouTube channel to get notifications for that. And also check out designcourse.com in the forums. Introduce yourself, and I will attempt to say hi. All right, goodbye.